the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. It doesn't take time. Hear me. It doesn't take time. It just takes having access to the keys. It doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion. There is what you can hold on to. When you catch it, you have caught it. It will change your life. Men will talk. They will only talk for nonsense. You will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped. But the question is, are you willing? It's not enough to just listen. There is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth. There are people in a worse situation. But this word has taken them out of it and honored them. It may look like there is a delay, but you must tell yourself the glory of God is changing me. This is already a word for somebody tonight. You may not look like it, brothers and sisters, forget about it. Your status is changing. There's no more decline. You're on your way to better day. Let them laugh at you today. Your status is changing. Your status is changed. No more decline. There's no more decline. You're on your way. You're on your way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. My status is changing. Spiritually, financially, in every respect. No more decline. On my way. On my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way, on my way, I'm on my way, Now pray and say, Lord, give me focus. Help me to settle with the word. Whatever distracts me. Whatever distracts me, whatever is robbing my life, I'm ready to be a student. I'm ready to submit myself. Go ahead and pray. I'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works. I'm ready to submit myself. I'm ready to lay down my pride. I repent from arguing with the word. Give me the keys, so oh God. Let my hands handle them. Pray. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument. Every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word.
Yes, Lord, I submit to your word. It has changed many. It has produced champions and generals. We're on our way. On our way. We're on our way. To better day. I'd like you to see your future and prophesy. I'm on my way. Oh, they will hear my voice. They will see his glory upon my life. On my way to better days. To better days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pick up your Bible, First John chapter 5, verse 4. God bless you. Let's get straight to the word. There is a lot to talk about. First John 5, verse 4. Please pay attention. If you are here, sit down, sit down, sit down. God bless you. Please look up, everyone, before we read that scripture. I expect everyone coming for Koinonia to at least buy a book like this. Praise the Lord. All these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it. Get something like this. Please, pay attention. Just be a student for a while and let the world honor you. Forget about pride, please. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old, rich or poor, whatever you, when you come to the presence of God, just follow instructions. Your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can, you can, you know, record and write very well. Do so. Don't just sit down and be careless. When you are inviting others, let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship. Hallelujah. If you love them enough, buy it and give them. Buy it. There are lots of jotters that we get from wedding. Free. Huh? Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? Get this. This is my own notebook. There are many others like this. It shows that you respect what God is teaching you. In the book of Revelation, when John saw everything, he told him, write. He didn't say, think about it. He didn't say, crime it. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. When prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God, when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write. Hallelujah. Please. When you come, that's why we have time to say hug one another. When we say hug, hug. When we say sit down and listen. No loitering around, walking around, pinching. This is, is demonic. It's not just bad. It's demonic. I'm telling you, it's, it's the spirit of distraction. Your mind cannot do too many things at once. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the word is coming, that's when you remember that, oh, I, I need to do this. I need to do that. Somebody is pinging you. You are pinging the person. It's demonic. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Please, inside and outside, even if you don't have a seat, pay attention. Somebody is smiling and telling you, have you seen their uniform? Tell the person, please, don't distract me. I'm tired of my situation and my life must change. Don't distract me. If you say it once, you won't repeat it again. But by the time you start entertaining nonsense, in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you, the person will say, can you imagine? Was it uh, that we've won? How much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today, but I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. 
and those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way. Ancient words ever true changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts Oh, let the ancient words First John 5 verse 4. Everyone read is projected. One, two, read. And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even replace our with my. Are you ready? Read it one more time. Even my faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10 verse 38. Media, you have to really help us today. Let's see how we can rush. I want us to finish on time. Hebrews 10 38. It says the just shall live by faith. In fact, frankly speaking, four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith. But I'll just speak to Hebrews 10 verse 38. Hallelujah. It says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. But if any man draw back, draw back in what? In living by faith. It says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live. Let me interpret it for you. The quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works. And this is what I'm going to be teaching you tonight what faith is and how it works the operation the dynamics that's what i would have taught last week but i was away and and the holy spirit told me no you must teach this my people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is but how it works through bible faith that will produce results for you habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4 it personalizes it in a very powerful way i love the prophet he said the just shall live by his faith. Not your neighbor's faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. He says behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live. By what? You will prosper by your understanding of faith. You will step into the anointing and the glory of God. The quality, the measure of the glory and the grace of God you will see in your life is dependent on faith. There are, there are free seats here. Please let it be a tradition from now that every time we begin the service, if there are people standing, some people should sit on their seats. There is a vacant seat here. There is another one that I see. I don't know why there should be those seats. There are people standing outside. Please, ushers, you should know that. Let's, let's occupy all the seats, please. Hallelujah. The just shall live by his faith. Everyone say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. One more time. Say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. Praise the Lord. The subject of faith is very important for the Christian experience. Um, there have been many teachings on faith. Many, many teachings. In fact, it's been the core teaching in many Christian circles. But there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith. And I trust that God will help us to be able to balance it. I want to go really straight to the point and that very, very fast. Hallelujah. It's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong. But many teachings about faith, please look up. Many teachings about faith are not complete. Faith is an equation. Faith is a formula. Are you following me now? And the compound 
components must be complete for it to work. Here and there, different men of God, preachers, great men and women of God have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works. But to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been. Hallelujah. Let's look at a few um, a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of Christ. Number one, or some corrections on the imbalances. Number one, it has been popularly taught that faith is believing. No, that's not it at all. Faith is not just believing. That's the point I want you to get. Be to believe is very important. It's part of the equation of faith. But it's not all there is to faith. You see that? For somebody straight up, this is your deliverance. Because you have been taught that faith is just believing. If you believe, that's all. No, sir. I can tell you this categorically. That's not the whole equation. Belief talks of conviction. Belief talks of persuasion. When you believe a thing, it means that you are convicted. It means that you are persuaded. But it does not mean it will produce for you. Please, let's understand that. Belief is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation, but it is not all of it. Number two, faith is not just confession, mm. body of Christ. Faith is not just confession. I'm dictating it so that you will write. Confession is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. Please, you must get this. Confession. In the equation of faith, there is a point where confession comes in. But that is not all there is to Bible faith. See that? Many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different Christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that, we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak. When you speak it, you have it. No, sir. I tell you the truth from God's word and from this Bible. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, faith is not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was to manifesting faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching, spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. But that's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three, faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seeds. So no, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest. But that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. The moment you are trusting God for 
a house. You sow a seed for that house and go and rest and it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraud star. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us uh, metaphysical people. They call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching. See, let me tell you something. Especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry. Realize that the church is an institution. Both a spiritual institution and a social institution. We influence culture. We shape people. The mindset in Nigeria has largely been altered through the church. For good now. Are you getting me? Nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world. And this is because of the presence and the influence of the church. There is a place that the church is playing in nation building. And, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the man of God. Because what that means is when you mislead people, it will create a ripple effect. Right? There are some of you, as you come and sit down under this anointing, as you hear the things I preach, you take them, some of you verbatim, back to your fellowships, your members, because you believe you want them to receive the same result. And that means I must be careful. If I teach you error, it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me. Are you seeing how error grows? Because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships, it may not be exactly as I said it. It will be based on what you understand. Right? By what I said. And so, the, the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. That's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance. So that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of God. Are you blessed? So faith is not just believing. Never forget this. Number two, faith is not just confession. The word confess comes from the Hebrew word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. So there is a place for that. The law of sound. The creative power of spoken words. But that's not all there is. Now I understand that there are times that we men of God take this aspect fragment by fragment and and i understand that that's not what i'm talking about there are people who have taken this in koinonia we have examined all of these aspects in details one by one and that is just for understanding but when it comes to manifesting faith you must be able to piece up all the fragments together are you getting my point now to complete the equation otherwise what you are doing is not bible faith say amen Praise the Lord. Faith is not just about sowing seeds. Otherwise, what difference do we have with those who just give charity around? There are unbelievers who sow cars, sow houses. Is that true? Faith is a law. Never forget this. Faith is a law. Meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced. When it is released anywhere. A law is not something that is territorial necessarily. It's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced. Salt is salt in Nigeria. Salt is salt in Bangladesh. Salt is salt in Israel. Salt is salt in Ukraine. Salt is salt in the Bahamas. Hallelujah. A gun is a gun in Nigeria. Right? A gun is a gun in Israel. What a gun can do in Nigeria, it can do in the UK. That's how faith is. It's a law. So write very quickly. The principles of manifesting the faith that works. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. I'm being very simple tonight because I really want us to get this. This is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life. Shiva. 
The principle of manifesting the faith that works. Let me have two people, please. Any two people? Come. Please watch this. Stand here, Benga. You stand here. Please. Watch this. Why is faith very important in the life of the believer? I want you to watch these people. This is... Hold this. This is God wanting to reach out to man. This is the blessing. Watch this. This is the breakthrough. This is the healing. This is the prosperity. This is the new level of grace. This is the insight. Are you getting me? And here is man. God so designed it that there is between God, his desire to bless you and down at your end, your desire to receive. There is a law that connects that. That law is called faith. Are you getting me now? Faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life. Faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability. My brother wants to see the power of God and it's not like God's ability is crippled. Lord, I want prosperity. Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want a miracle. Take me to another level. I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit. This is it. This is it. Fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? And this is another imbalance that preachers say. The fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically. Is that true? I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket, it's paid for. But that does not mean it has been delivered automatically. See that? Faith. Faith is what connects you. Watch this. This brother is standing desperate. Oh God, would you not change my situation? 10 years, 15 years, nothing has changed. He's born again. He believes in Jesus. He believes Jesus died. He's a tongue talker. Maybe he even pays tithe in church. So seed confesses the word, but nothing is changing because this connection. Are you seeing it now? God is asking that you authorize him. There is a connection between the power of God and where it is needed in this earth realm. Faith. Are we following now? Between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect. Are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty? He wants to come. Make no mistakes about it. God wants to reveal himself as a loving God. The love of God compels him to want to bless us. But the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect. Stretch your hands, promise, and connect this. This is faith. Once you lay hold on this, then there is, there's no limit again. There are many of us, thank you very much, guys. God bless you. And I don't know what they were thinking about. They're thinking, they're always thinking in partition. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's why I gave the example from beginning so that your, your desires will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that where you are, where your family is, is not just because the devil is so powerful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just because you may not be praying correctly, but maybe you have not been taught. There is nothing wrong in not knowing. The problem is when you are not willing to learn. Hallelujah. Faith is the platform. Never forget this. This is why we need faith. The platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life. God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower. When he said, let them have dominion, it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that. No. He needs an authorization. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations, it said, behold, I stand. And what? And what? This is God speaking. Why will he be knocking? Won't he just step in and say, I created you. Open that door whether you want it or not. No. Behold, I stand and knock. And I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it. 
Tonight, may we authorize God to step into our lives and He will see how small many situations are. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, the faith of God is at work in me. So what then is this equation of faith? How does it work? Now that we know that faith is not just, um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching, but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word. And we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds. Very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? God says, yes, so oh, I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Why are you not parting my situation? And then God says, allow me. Authorize me. Authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything. All I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? And there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful, stretches to that limit. Where it tells you God should do everything for you. No, sir. There are two dimensions of grace. Let me say it very quickly. I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God. And I agree absolutely with them in many aspects. There may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there who's that what's wrong with her she's sick huh who brought her you came with her hold her now protocol and let her talk huh please hold the mother and let the lady come come you you can hold the mother what's wrong Her kidneys. Hold on, please. Where are you taking her? No. Bring her. It's a spirit. Bring her. It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother, how long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. Shika, you believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing, Jesus. We believe, Jesus. There is healing in your name. One more time, come on, sing. Imagine this were your mother. Jesus. Don't cry. Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is on all of you. All three of you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cause this devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys. In the name of Jesus, I curse that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go! In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
renal failure, I curse you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I curse you. 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 Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. 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 Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. Just turn around. Turn around. Help her. Turn around. Come. Kidney failure. That devil. Is. Look at she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. Listen. This is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika and this woman would have died because I see in a vision Sunday they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry. Don't, don't cry gently. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you. Huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been but in seconds you can authorize the power of God see I already sense the healing anointing so as you are listening to me if you are sick here this is always what happens because when once one miracle happens the water is stirred, right very important brothers and sisters listen it's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama there is nothing special about me this is what i want you to understand the goal i know some of you are saying i don't agree there's just listen to what i'm telling you you know you know as i preach i i discern your thoughts i know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We are hurrying up. Please take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Ramati shelama haria balakaparusa pratigere baladaba.
inside and outside. Pray in tongues, participate. Krapata balada bakata prete gede bele de bos kongrati shela pretiya skata balada baka prende gede bele de bos. Open our eyes. We submit to you, Great Spirit of God. Open our eyes. And this is the faith that overcomes even our faith. This is number one. The faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation. Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation. Please look up. The first is study. 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 And the second is meditation. You don't have revelation just by wishing. Study. It first starts by searching out. You cannot have faith in what you do not know. I love this baby. Come. Ash is afraid. She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> May God bless. One, one of these days, our children will open the service for us. All of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes. Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues. At their age, we didn't even know whether, but, but God is doing a lot of work in our children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Revelation. So it starts with diligently searching. Everybody say diligently searching. Now, the problem with many believers, you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you, to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than this. As I study, I begin to see, If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you'll be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you and you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like he told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. You are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it as you are eating. Walk, walk. <laughs> you think I don't know how that thing works? Be fooled by what you see. 
There is a testimony of the transition of faith. See that? I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time, I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite. There's a way you arrange it so that with every bite, you know, the whole surface area is covered. You push it in. You are not the first to do it. So all that insult, you've been insulting God, you said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? And God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the... Look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. Say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something happens. Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to crime scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Criming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So, I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? different aspects and I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord, my promised land finding out what God's idea what are his promises what is his, what does his word have to tell me about this how far can I be anointed to what limit the problem is, you see the reason why the devil kills your word study life right See, when the devil wants to destroy you, there are three things he just attacks. It's very easy. Number one, he kills your word life. Number two, he kills your prayer life. Number three, he kills your corporate fellowship life. When these three are dead, you are finished. It's as simple as that. Just three things. You want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness. Notice, ladies, You've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages, that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library. You have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week but how come when it comes to studying this you thought it's because the letters are small you brought you bought large letter edition it still is big there is a there is a spirit hallelujah everybody says study it starts there let me not deceive you brothers and sisters faith is not cheap 
If you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. Through Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation as, as, is not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation. Because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor laughs at you and says, Look, you have not been paying tithe. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up, let him see you. Oh, I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful to do a thing without having the revelation. You'll be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us. Is God speaking to us? There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noise makers are asleep. And I just sit down. And I'm just praying in tongues. Sheep, alada, balada. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry. Worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship. And you're just sitting down. All of a sudden, a scripture like an arrow will fire into your spirit. When you share it with somebody, you'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump. Because it's a revelation to you. Have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said, my goodness, my brother, you are slapping your head while you are talking. You say, ah, is it not last week's coin? On your and you live there so sad and disappointed. Don't be disappointed. They are life to those who find them. To those who find them. It has become your revelation. Now you are ready to move to the next level. Are we following now? So the equation starts with what? Number one is revelation. And under revelation, it takes study and meditation. When a revelation has truly entered your spirit, it will bring conviction. Listen, I've said it again and again and let me repeat it. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. That's study. Revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life. Hmm. Number two, the second dimension the moment conviction and persuasion is there, you believe it. That's why many of us stop. But that's not all there is. Let me shock you. The next 
dimension to the equation of faith is prayer. And I'll tell you why. It's not just acting. It's prayer. Listen to me. I'm telling you what works. Prayer. When you catch a revelation, the next thing is not to run. You will miss something major. This is where a lot of people miss it. Are you getting it now? When you catch a revelation, brothers and sisters, the next dimension is prayer. An investment praying in tongues. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues, real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost, contend for it. We are more than ready to minister to you here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of Christ. You are the only one who has not had the revelation. It's a done deal. It's a settled thing. The advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier or whatever it is. What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. Kabbalah katabalataya. Hmm. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. You now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in. And now she begins to meditate. Seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible. All the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness. And all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb. She's studying. And in it she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did. It does not mean you just, you can stand up. Your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are, we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing full here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you. Sometimes you can be praying. It is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation. And then two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. I found that revelation. 
where Jesus, the, the master, told them, he said, why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle auntie things. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, Why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? True study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. There is Bible Gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense. Some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? Hallelujah. And you get it. So God is able. You see, the might, the revelation of the might of God begins to down on you. If God gave these people jobs and he paid them salary, it means I can get a job and they will pay me salary. And you begin to pray. The moment you begin to pray, don't just get up and act and say, yes, I've caught it, application. I hereby write for a job in this company. You must give me. What grace is sponsoring that, 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 that religiosity? That's religion. That's why you open the office and they'll say, what are you saying? You say, I want a job. They say, walk out of here. Do you think? And you, and you now live disappointed. You went with a lot of zeal. God is good. He has done me well. And, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer. The threshing floor. Where your customized, unique instruction is given. Somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him. Because God is showing you the missing link. It will work. And then I begin to pray. This is how I do with koinonia messages. I play the messages. And while the messages are playing, because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost, the man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him. And while he's preaching and praying, and I just hear something. Once you hear it, you are ready to act. Because the moment an instruction comes, that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible. Right? It doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. And while you are praying, Lord, I believe you will change my life tonight. And while you are praying, a scripture just come. Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. You see that? That's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's rema to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What God does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions, especially financial instructions. Some of you, you, have not, you are not givers. That's why it, 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 you don't get... There are some people here who are reckless givers. If you are a true giver, you know that you need grace. It's called giving grace. Because you are crying and saying, Lord, change my situation. Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody. I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations and God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? 
you are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having no readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says, if ye be what? And not willing and desirous. Not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part, this is the link, brothers and sisters, this is the consummation of the faith equation. No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession, sowing of seeds, only become potent when we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out that this is the link between where you are and where you need to go. Brothers and sisters, obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. That's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer. Lord, I know you are about to speak and I cannot pretend that I'm not hearing you. So grant me the grace. That when the instructions come, may they not be too heavy. Yes. 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 That's all I'll say to him. Yes. your link to the next level yes. when you hear that instruction yes. it means your season is about to change a guarantee listen your obedience is what judges the devil obedience obedience oh I feel the anointing of the spirit I'll hurry up so that we will pray brothers and sisters obedience obedience we are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you with a few Isaiah 51 please quickly 1 and 2 let's hurry up Isaiah 51 Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah, verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He say now that you know what faith is, look at a biblical portrait, understudy his life, and you will find therein the keys. So let's study Abraham. Genesis 22. Quickly, please. Our first case study 
is Abraham. How did God turn an idol worshiper, a mediocre in a small land called the awe of the Chaldeans? How did he become so prosperous? How did he become the father of faith? Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So we see that an instruction came. What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. It says, get thee out of thy country from thy kindred father's house unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we cut the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. Verse 3 now. Help us media. In Jesus name. Please walk together. We have to really rush. Okay no problem. And then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there. And he would have died an idol worshiper. At the awe. At awe of the Chaldeans. He got up. And began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13 sorry. Chapter 13 not chapter 13 from verse 1 and Abraham went up out of Egypt he and his wife and all that he had and Lot went with him into the south Abraham took a step and he started moving Lord said I'm going with you for joining in the obedience alone the man became blessed are you getting me now Lot was not part of the covenant like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Ruth said, no way. Your obedience is my... Whatever you do, I will do. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come. For that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some some kinds of things liftings and all of that and it came to pass after these things that god did tempt the word tempt there is test abraham and said unto him abraham and he said behold here i am verse two and he said what take your son we are understanding abraham abraham did not just carry isaac he would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached you move as instructed not as you wish either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word is still the same we have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of god it says isaac whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of moria and offer him there as a bond offering upon one of the mountains which i'll show you verse 3 may that be your testimony read the first line and Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted. And you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Hi! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said it's even 200 I'll give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika 
and you say in the name of Jesus I'm going I know that they are used to see me just as a brother but I'm going as instructed and later on you just say let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga and see whether he has prepared lunch after the lunch and everything you get up and your mind starts telling you yourself they have already called you stupid even before you behave stupid now by the time you go to the hospital what if they drive you what if something happens to the car I say oh lord I'll just intercede after all it's, it will soon be time for prayers you see the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately the grace for obedience must be maximized promptly he rose up early there is a reason why the bible tells us that remember we are understudying Abraham he rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. He said, And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, My God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that. And he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now. I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a burnt offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience to the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself come on now this is God stepping in when your equation is complete Satan was not mentioned here it was a deal between God and he said by myself I have sworn because thou hast done done not said not confess oh I will kill Isaac in the name of Jesus Isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead it's nonsense if there is no obedience he said and has not withheld thy son 17 he said that in blessing i will bless you and in multiplying i will multiply you as the uh, uh, thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall what possess the gates of thy enemy please i want you to make up your mind beginning from today that obedience will become the watchword of your life. This is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it, I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there. But one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came. They took steps. Jericho. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord began to speak to Joshua. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, so I will be with you. Right? He said, only 
don't be afraid, be courageous, and so on and so forth. And, and you know, he looked at all of them. Now, watch this. God had told him he had given him Jericho. But if they just went, do you know they would have killed them? Please, learn this. Never obey. Just try to obey without prayer. Involve God. You will get the unique instructions. That's where the power lies. In the word. In the instruction. Hallelujah. When Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho, but there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times and he said, now, Tehillah, let there be a shout. That was a strategy. Other times, he told Jehoshaphat, he said, put the worshippers in front and let them begin to sing and say you are good and your mercies endure forever. That's the strategy. For you, your strategy may be come for counseling. God can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life. Write your name for counseling. Even if there is nothing, just come. That's a strategy. For someone else, the Lord will say, go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you and you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. The widow in Zarephath, 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it, will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, bring me water. The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread and she said honestly sir this instruction is so much he said just do this and the bible says when she obeyed her faith was released and she saw the supply are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience in my opinion there is one word for faith obedience that's it one word obedience if you do not obey the word, forget about the manifestation. When we're about to start Koinonia, I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit just lying down and worshiping and all of a sudden i had cgc the lord spoke to me and i said lord i don't even know the people here how are we going to get access to the place and the lord told me i've gone before you you see you don't need to do anything just stay there the word has come and see where we are today the product of faith it will work any day it will work any time one time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day I said, Lord, what is, what is this strategy? And first we had moved to Saturday. And then the Lord helped us to arrive. Who does counseling on Monday by 11 o'clock? Does that make sense to you? That's what God said. Look, brothers and sisters, if he speaks, start moving. Let your mind understand later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus looks at a man who is blind. Sir, I am blind. And then Jesus makes mud. Right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Hapa. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. See? You can choose to be arrogant about it 
or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story now man said but there no rivers the, the, the servant said i'm walking with you soon i will leave you please you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us you are a liability to me this and that and that go and bath and he went watch this he went and started obeying but nothing happened till his obedience was complete six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool a man who brought victory right he would have just moved and would say ah captain where are you from he said what well, one stupid prophet gave me an instruction after six times i said come on my pride will not allow me many of you started obeying one step to see the hand of god the devil brought you back and look nothing happened one step some of you came for miracle service for instance and we said in the name of jesus you shout that name jesus and you just stood and said i beg there people were just shouting like fools and you were there and said, ah, everybody was getting blessed getting healed instructions instructions the secret of true faith when you get that word obey the truth is we have not been obedient enough and this is why we've not been seeing it look at the feeding of the five thousand jesus took the bread blessed it and did what the bread did not multiply in the hands of jesus did it no sir he gave them he said go and start sharing go and start sharing look at the ten lepers he told them he said go and show yourself to the priest and they went at that word the bible said as they went not before as they went he says this sign shall follow not go before you have to take steps A miracle always comes or the miracle always comes after the instruction or condition is met never forget this the miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed fully yes to your will Lord yes to your way Oh, oh yes lord i will obey yes to your will lord yes to your way oh, oh yes lord i will obey faith therefore is defined as the action you take right we're concluding faith is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God right faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by God if you do that you have manifested what the Bible calls Bible faith otherwise you will just be playing games and talking games I told the Lord whatever you demand of me I will do I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love, I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me this shoe goes for so 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 person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so 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 person. Years ago I would have cried but I've grown. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction. Pack everything. Ah. If God has told you you will marry a man of God... It, start praying for grace don't just say when pray for grace 
because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you a true man of God is strange right you wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room speak Lord I'm listening honey what's going on I'm okay it's alright and you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not listen you will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience. Never. 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 Don't reject the instructions of God. Every time you search the Bible, look for conditions, not just promises alone. What are the conditions tied to them? Hallelujah. I sowed that seed and in less than two hours more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace there was a time the Lord instructed me I locked myself for three days non-stop my eyes did not see the sun did not see the sun because the Lord said so no sun no food no nothing the only thing that I did was to take my bath and that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed no nothing are you willing to obey if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land hallelujah i told you about how i trekked from the roundabout in pz right at the instruction of the lord the roundabout in pz i trekked to aviation praying in tongues i take this city the keys of this city is given unto me don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because i'm a young man it's not charm when you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to that. Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time, his father was sick. And he played an instrument for, from night. The Lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument from about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshipping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the Lord is not too short koinonia are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions my life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord instructions of I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday. I saw one suit that I like. New suit. They just showed it to me. And the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol. Ah! I said, oh God, this is going. I called him immediately. I said, where are you? I said, come quickly. This is for you. And he came and I gave him. He was surprised. I said, bye-bye. Before any unbelief will enter and I'll collect my team back. Go. I love you, Jesus. That was from the spirit. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen, a 
it says through faith they subdued kingdoms they wrought righteousness they shut the mouths of lions he said what more can i say for time will fail me to speak to you about gideon and barak and jephthah ordinary men who obey god to the latter sister when you obey god that man must come it doesn't matter where he is forget about witches and wizards concentrate on your obedience concentrate there are some of you god told you drag your family members and bring them here the word came with the grace for it to happen you say master we have toiled all night there are times god can use a man to speak to you they tell you go and listen to relationship and family life i have listened to it before no no remember you are responding to a word don't forget he may tell you to do what you have always done but this time around there is an anointing upon it you will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions god can tell you just sit down on these drums and just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying in tongues do it do it if you are ashamed of men forget about greatness you will never carry certain levels of the anointing i went for six hours in just standing at the rain had bunker crusade because i was desperate and and i set my gaze on that man because there was something i wanted to land on me i was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places ah this man this white man why is he wasting our time is there rema or no rema that was not my, i was at my 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 face was set like a flint brothers and sisters listen wait the financial prosperity series i'm about to preach i truly believe it will cause a revolution there are new things that the lord has shown me that i put my hand on my head i say my goodness joshua Selman, where have you been your life must change when the season of the rain obedience is the platform don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. hallelujah hallelujah i'd like you to pray prayer point number one lord help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture lift your voice please pray seriously this is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside let our spirits be open, O oh God, that as we study, may we see instructions. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instructions. Hallelujah. Listen. There are conditions tied to you walking in divine health. 
There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your word supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough, to the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. Through vision, through the written word, through prophetic direction, instructions will come in messages as you walk. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house. And I find out. God gives me an instruction. Go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want. That's an instruction. Don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments. Now I go and I say Lord I found what I want. God will say go and estimate. How much will it cost? Now you, you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million. <laughs> You are sitting down. All you have home and abroad is 500 naira. Forget about it. And it, look, the blessing is in the instruction. It's not in what you have. Whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this. And then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer. Maybe go and wash the plate. Go to one woman who is already married. He may even be your friend. 
He said, just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate. That's the instruction. If you are too ashamed to do it, forget about marriage. It may be crazy, but go and do it. After you have done that, then you can now begin to prophesy. And you can now connect with a seed. And say, Lord, I sow a seed into this. And I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving. And all of that. You don't sit down and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counseling. This is the situation. What do you think? What is the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle that is responsible for the delivery of this? Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed, it's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman listen to my message he's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages and they are trusting god he's a real estate person he's trusting god for breakthroughs and all of that and then a miracle just happened to him within a short time they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell his profit from that is 300 million he's a young man like me the word as if that will finish when i when i got to abuja he made sure every time i go to abuja he makes sure he's the one driving me around he said, I must drive you. The last time I went, he said they gave him another 40 hectares, making 100 hectares. What is it that God cannot do? Your obedience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your obedience. Your obedience. Your obedience. I hear a lot of testimonies. Testimonies. You were, I think many of us have, have we've heard about the testimony. Of the woman who for eight years was barren, Selena's auntie or so. And this woman supernaturally, by acting the word of God, had triplets. They are all alive today. Triplets to recover for the eight years. What is it that God cannot do? Don't come with say right prayer requests. It's when you are here that you just scrabble in what is even your own. You are just playing games with God. That's why very few people get testimonies. Change your attitude from today. Let it not be Friday by five. You say it's time for koinonia. Be intentional about it. There are people who come in for miracle service. We all fast on Thursdays. But on Friday, they, they prepare. When I'm coming for koinonia, it's as if, do you know, you see me sit down sometimes here. My body is shaking. I'm just waiting for worship to finish. Testimonies, when people are shouting, you see, there's answer. I want to just dispense what God has brought. But there are people who just sit down. You bring a teaspoon and you want, you want to have an ocean of blessings. Enlarge your capacity. Let's pray one more prayer point before we round up. Hold up the hand of your neighbor. You are going to pray and say, Lord, this is the season where you are changing his level, changing her level. Go ahead and prophesy. Prophesy. How great you are. How great you are. Oh, your level must change. How great you are. Koinonia, it's time for a new season. It's the season of the rain. Don't be a spectator. My financial level must change. My spiritual life must change. My influence must change. The grace of God upon my life must move higher. I'm ready to obey. How great you are. Oh, 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 how great you are. Hey, how great you are. 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 
Lift your hands and let me prophesy over your life. There is, see, for Koinonia, God is shifting us. I know it. I feel it. God is shifting us. You can choose to believe it. You can sit down there and let other people just through the tapes. Or you can connect to the anointing and say, this is my season. I place a demand on everything that is at work in this house. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Let the spirit of faith, the capacity to obey God without reservation, the meekness, the childlikeness to obey God, let it be released upon your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that as a result of this teaching tonight, let there be a rain of testimonies. Let there be miracles upon miracles upon miracles. Financial miracles. Miracles of multiplied graces. Miracles of marriages. Miracles of breakthroughs. Miracles of favor. Miracles of lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the influence of the kingdom comes upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you will begin to command influence across your territory by the mystery of the oil of gladness let it take you above your fellows hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus that the mantle of honor that which makes men he said and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren I pray for you in the name of Jesus that beginning from tonight everywhere you go you will find men who will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ you will find men who will honor you I pray for everything that is dead or dying in this place I don't care what it is by the same power that raised Christ from the dead I speak to everything that is dead in your life I command it tonight come back to life dead academic situations come back to life now dead financial situations come back to life now dead family situations come back to life now hear me whatever has covered your glory and I stop men from seeing the hand of God. I tear that veil into pieces. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has stopped men from favoring you. They used to bless you. But something happened mysteriously. The same people are still around. But the blessings have stopped. I connect you by faith. To that flow of the blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. The season where you must bear fruit. I prophesy upon you. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Multiply. In the name of Jesus. Replenish. I command that you subdue every force of darkness. And every force of witchcraft. And every curse and every enchantment. And I prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus. Have dominion. Everywhere you go. Let there be an anointing upon you. Anyone that comes under the jurisdiction of your influence, I compel them to bless you. I compel them to honor you. In the name that is above all names, I command that a book of remembrance, Makato Toto Balakata, like Mordecai, whoever has done good and your, 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 your reward has not come, tonight as you sleep, in the heavenlies let the book of remembrance be open may my God use strangers to bless you may he use strangers to bring your business back to life may my God bring strangers to bless your family and I pray for you greater levels of the anointing 
you belong to a ministry that works in an ever increasing anointing may that be at work in your life I command that the level you are in the anointing you have lingered yet for too long step up to a new level step up to a new level a new level of the healing anointing a new level of the anointing of prophecy a new level of the gifts of the spirit in the name of Jesus I release this power from here on stage upon this altar I prophesy it let it touch you and let it change you in the name of Jesus Lord your people must bear result I command you be fruitful I command it be fruitful students be fruitful workers be fruitful in the name of Jesus businessmen be fruitful everything that has refused to work I invoke the laws of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I command in a miraculous way let things begin to work whoever needs to call you this week whoever needs to connect you whoever needs to come to your business whoever needs to give you a job I prophesy in the name of the Lord Jesus may my father bring them to you testimonies in scripture have always encouraged the faith of people listen let me tell you this miracles in themselves listen please miracles in themselves are not enough to convert a man it is the holy spirit let, let me balance it right now because there were people who attended the crusades of jesus yet they ran away from him until the holy ghost came upon the church so that an individual in fact there were scribes and pharisees who were in almost every meeting yet they never believed jesus so miracles in themselves are not the true basis for conviction and conversion that is the ministry of the holy spirit everybody say the holy spirit the bible says that when he the spirit of truth is come listen it says he will guide you into all truth he will convict reproof now the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment however miracles were designed by god to be a support structure that consolidates on what the holy spirit is doing to aid conviction that will ultimately lead to conversion I believe in miracles I truly do now I've had a lot of thoughts I'm trying to break some of the things that stop us from receiving and um, one of it is the fact that Christians were not designed to be the ones chasing miracles I agree I agree that there is a more superior way of living where we live by the principles of the kingdom but let me admit to you that the need for the miraculous will remain in the church and even in the midst of believers for two reasons number one the reality of our humanity the fact that the human nature is still in us there will always be a need for the power of God to intervene once and again please listen to what I'm saying it's very very important Psalm 27 verse 13 and 14 whilst it is true that the most excellent way is to live by the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom that immunes you from the need to have God crash land certain things in your life and produce certain results the principles of the kingdom were designed to bring predictability to our lives a miracle is needed because a law had been violated and God's love and mercy needs to come in to bridge that default are we together now however because of the reality of our human nature even though we are still stepping experientially into the image and the character of the Christ here and there we will find ourselves missing out on the full standard of God's expectation as required to walk in total victory hence the need for the miraculous where is a doctor here these guys are not here okay let's uh -huh, okay please stand up dave watch this dave is a doctor and i want you to listen with me for a moment did you know 
that the best way to enjoy your life is not to go to the hospital every day are we together now you should get to a point where you eat healthy you are healthy and then you live right but there are many factors here and there although you are aware of the fact that eating healthy and living right is the more excellent way every once and again you will catch yourself needing this man now if the doctors decide to close the hospital just because there is a more excellent way it means that on your journey to becoming that more excellent way you will not even live to re to, to, to lift um, to reach that level you will die and just finish up so doctor is a sign and a symbol of God's mercy that while there is a higher standard for you his mercy is still trailing you so that if and when you need the doctor he can still come are we together please sit down the miraculous is still important even for believers there are times while you are learning the principle for instance of wealth and abundance because it takes a while to be established to understand that principle what happens to your rent today tomorrow you will have enough to feed nations but today there is a concern so he said give us this day lord you can give us while we learn to access that supply we can cry that you give us today very important the human nature of men believers and unbelievers matured believers and those who are just starting alike will at one point or the other because of the reality of their humanity need the intervention of god's power the psalmist said i had fainted unless i had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living i had fainted that means that i would have been a forgotten story save for this intervention i had fainted unless i had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living the second reason why all including believers will need the miraculous hand of god at one point or the other is because of the presence of wicked spirits first john chapter 5 and verse 19 the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there is a contention that consistently plagues the believer paul writing and teaching the church in ephesus he taught them how to as we call it to sit in their position that that understanding that they have been seated with christ then he taught them how to walk worthy of their calling but then he also taught them how to stand against the wiles of the enemy the bible says and we know that we are of god and in spite of the fact that we are of god the whole world how many of the world it didn't say africa so whether you go to europe or whether you go to america the caribbeans wherever you are provided you are in this world the bible says it lies in wickedness There are two ways to have your car jammed. You hit somebody or somebody hits you. In any way, the car will pay for it. So we need the miraculous hand of God. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, a number of us are too young to understand the reality of wickedness in this life because we have been shielded by the sacrifices of others. Whether you sow or not, there is a harvest. But as, as you begin to transit through life, you will understand that there is a real warfare that happens in this life. Warfare for your soul. Warfare for your children. Warfare for your finances. Warfare for your relevance. And it takes an understanding that if God be for us, hallelujah, he says, who can be against us? Reverse the statement. If God is not for us, who will not be against us? That means my security is having the hand of God with me. 
as a man of God the devil will not sit down and allow you to keep winning souls every time you are converting people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son then he will cross his leg and laugh no every arsenal that can be launched against your church your ministry will come and if you do not understand when to call for help and say lord i invoke it ah look the bible says the body of moses michael was carrying the dead body of moses to heaven and suddenly satan traps him in the heavenlies and was fighting for the body and he said the lord rebuke you the lord I use a power that is greater than you rebuke you even a dead man's body was still useful for Satan not to talk about you who is alive a dead man who does not have a will who does not have emotions but Satan said the body can still be relevant a spirit is searching for that body and that spirit will resurrect as Moses and deceive people so there was potentials even in a dead body the same way the devil used the face of your mother to press you and now you think it's your mother that is a witch demons are crying and wanting bodies are you learning something tonight let me tell you my brothers and my sisters i really hate to be the bearer of bad news but i will be lying to you if I tell you that all you see is all there is, there is real warfare in this life. There is victory assured. There can be victory established, but it does not negate the fact that there is warfare. When your children leave your house and go to school, for that five, six hours, there is more warfare than you know. Are we together? You release them from your house, they come back asking you questions you are even afraid to answer. There's warfare. You think the devil will sit down and allow you to be the first person in your family to build a house. Who do you think you are? Your father tried to rise and that altar crushed him to pieces. And here you come, boasting that I am in Christ. If you don't understand how to tap into the help of God, that same hand will crush you to pieces this is where many believers continue to deceive themselves and mock themselves Jesus himself needed the father he said father don't forsake me this is not the right time to forsake me Eloi Eloi Lamak Sabachthani the world needed help from heaven the world was unfruitful until he was assisted by the Holy Spirit apostle my church is not growing i'm a faithful man of god i love the lord i see visions i can pray for the sick members are not coming because growth is warfare people are not stupid to just leave their homes and come and stand to hear you do you know the amount of devils and demons that stop you from coming here today do you know the amount of excuses the devil orchestrated satan is desperate for your downfall if you ever found yourself here, it's a sign that your miracle has started. I'm telling you this. We are not alone in this world. Get used to it. There are real spirits, not only angels, not only the Holy Spirit. There is an old story here. There are spirits older than everyone and they have not been prohibited from moving to and fro they can still move and let me tell you sooner or later they will land around the vicinity of your family and the, the bible says the whole world lies in not badness wickedness many of us today are seated here right now in the next few minutes when we begin to pray that is when you will wonder so this thing in my life i thought was a coincidence is a pre-programming of wickedness let me tell you this i have seen the wickedness of men and spirits too many times in my little life i have looked at destinies that i know this person should not be here 
but tonight in the name of Jesus the hand of God will come upon us and that everything that does not name the name of Christ must give way what about your finances you thought it's just about business it is warfare I've taught you this the devil when you have vowed before God that Lord if you bless me your kingdom will be advanced and the devil had that prayer I hope you know when you pray it's not only God that hears when you pray the realm of the spirit hears your prayer that's why he says this charge I give unto you my son Timothy that you wore a good warfare as I was prophesying to you the devil had it he will not keep quiet get up and wore a good warfare I thought the prophecy should work itself he said wore a good warfare otherwise you will see it in the realm of the spirit but it will never manifest many believers are ignorant of this one thing there are many families sitting down right now looking at me and you do not know that if you do not rise i got several text messages from people apostle this is wrong with me i, I just replied them and said come for miracle service i i don't know how i'm going to start giving you this explanation you will learn after you are touched if i allow you to learn you may die and never have the opportunity to hear the message it is something that needs the power of god first you will grow spiritually but in the interim let's deal with the devil for you so that by the time he's dealt with you can have the time to grow i was ministering yesterday and a precious lady that god touched i mean lumps all over her can you imagine that kind of wickedness I think one of them said also that she was operated and then it returned again that means it's a living thing it's only living things that can move they can go and come dead things lie down there they removed it and it left where they threw it and came back is that a dead thing now I hear the chains falling. listen when God gives you ten naira and it runs away from you don't you think something is driving it away please listen to what i'm telling you when somebody promises that sam i will bless you and all of a sudden because he promised to bless you he starts going down he intended to bless you have you seen people like that they say i'm waiting for salary to bless you the moment they say i want to bless you that money will never come there's something wrong god gave us intelligence we are not stupid people but let me tell you my brothers and sisters for as long as you justify darkness you are not ready for victory you must get angry and say no way lord i have come like jacob i will not let you go some of you travel from far some of you are connecting from different parts of the world please refuse don't come and play games lord there must be an evidence there must be an evidence you get pregnant as a christian as a tongue-talking christian you go to bed and hear these wicked spirits they come to molest you and in two three months you've lost the child the doctors will do their best to support you but doctors cannot treat spirits it takes the power of god it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves there are cases that can never be diagnosed medically machines don't diagnose spirits I heard the testimony of a woman genuine testimony her husband had died died and gone to be with the Lord and a spirit came to her in the dream and tried to molest her and within two three months she, she was pregnant she noticed she was pregnant from the realm of the spirit with a physical child I don't know who made us so carnal that we think we will casually please be careful you watch TV and people trivialize the reality of the realm of the spirit if you are a pastor here listen to me end time ministry is real warfare you are not going to stand and cross your leg and my church should keep growing just because you are reading a novel about church growth no it takes you subduing the powers that be is God speaking to someone tonight 
fathers here you need to stand up and take charge every father is a priest you are already ordained as a father as a priest over your home and you are not going to watch darkness come and sit down and say it does not matter that's why men who are not born again and serious with god is a serious problem you open your shop to sell and there is a pungency there is a sense of repulsion you have everything that should be bought and people leave your shop and go somewhere to queue no we wrestle not against flesh and blood please listen to me but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and the spiritual wickedness they don't reside in hell they are in the heavenlies I counseled a man of God I think it was two three years ago the devil I don't know the devil uses his face to oppress his members like you have a church now and then you will see my face I will come with an axe in a dream or something and oppress you will you attend that church and everybody started saying the man is a fake man truly I don't know anything about him but when I got to meet him, he said, Apostle, what is this? He said, I got born again in the present. I have a history. What is this thing? Everybody is saying I'm a fake man of God. I went to collect power that they see me in dreams. I said, that's it. The enemy has done this. The devil would divide best friends by using the face of a best friend to oppress someone. Then lead that best friend to a, a prophet who may not be fake, but is not spiritually accurate. And he will say, your friend is jealous and wants to kill you. Nonsense! Listen to me. These spirits are actors. They can join you together. They look for where trouble is and guide you. Like the Holy Spirit guides you in all truth. The devil can guide you in all trouble police is about to arrest a thief you, you find out that you are you are passionate about leaving home to go there you were minding your business but now you just get somewhere and they arrest all of you it's not normal it's not normal it's not normal we need miracles so we need real divine interventions we need the hand of god to come upon our lives we need the grace of god you are in your office with all kinds of people listen one of the things we have to learn is that not everybody is born again i think we are used to the fact that we are all born again around a circle so because of that you believe that the same way in your office everyone is born again let me tell you there are people who are fraternized with darkness to a realm and a level that except you are powerful indeed they will not only destroy you they will destroy you slowly hallelujah i think he was here i don't know which month i hope maybe the family may even be here they brought for me a medical student the final year last session the lady just became mad I is it because of reading is she the first to go to school it's a spirit a woman labors on her daughter my brothers and my sisters and just when this woman is about to reap the reward of her labor have you not heard of people who graduated on their way going back home to celebrate a bike comes out from nowhere there is no bike that comes out from nowhere thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilence well you can choose to believe what i'm telling you or you can choose to allow time proof to you that this life does not joke if jesus himself got up early in the morning to pray and put everything in order he says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth thereof i've shared with you how many times i'm i want to take a trip and somebody genuine prophet genuine some of them are my friends and send me a text and say apostle be careful i saw an accident i saw this that is the plan of the devil but the ability to know his plan and conquer it is where victory comes from listen to me it is selfish 
to forget about your family and forget the let me tell you this you know esther was going to make a mistake the same mistake of vashti esther was about to make it she was about to forget her people and the purpose for which she went to the palace and mordecai said don't think that when they are done with us you will be spared sometimes when the devil wants to destroy you he will leave the most powerful person to continue while he destroys every other person do you know that their going down will affect you spiritually tonight we came for serious business i vowed a vow that i'm not going to waste the time of any of god's people no this 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 ministry is not a museum this is the place where we dislodge darkness you you have to return with a testimony a woman called me one time she had this son whether he joined friends or so and went somewhere i don't know what he went to go and do this young boy and maybe about 10 or 11 started hearing voices physical voices like word of knowledge sometimes they can tell him kill yourself or pour hot water you know you you know that is of the devil when the instruction does not carry the life of god god will never ask you to pour hot water on your body how does it glorify jesus the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy and this boy continued to do all these kinds of things and i told her, i said mama thank god you brought this boy this boy would die for nothing one day hell is rearming itself to make sure there is an onslaught an assault against the body of christ and many times we are just crossing our legs listen i need you to know i've taught you about warfare we teach warfare correctly we are not people who fight from a standpoint of foolishness we are standing from a standpoint of victory but that establishment you must do it otherwise victory will not be automatic hebrews chapter 2 it says but we do not yet see all things under his feet please let me say this respectfully be careful who you listen to and be careful the content of the spiritual information you are giving just because people are sincere may not mean their communications are balanced and accurate listen to what i'm telling you many people have become casualties of imbalanced spiritual communications jesus told us everywhere in his crusade demons came they were not afraid of Jesus' own crusade. Demons, they followed people. They didn't wait outside and enter later on. They came. Imagine Jesus in a crusade. Praise the Lord. The people shouted hallelujah. And the demons were still in them. And they did not go. When the word is not engaged, it does not have any power to do anything. A spirit can sit down. The same way some of you are sitting quietly now. As sincere and innocent as you are. In the next few minutes you'll be surprised what will be happening in your own life and then you will see doors that have been closed opening like this then you will know that these doors were not closed by mistake and will not be opened by mistake everything good comes to everybody except you the moment is your turn something terrible happens a gentleman just sees you and say beautiful lady can i go and see your parents and that's the end of it his business goes down his life goes down everything crashes until he leaves you then he goes back up do you believe what i'm teaching you <laughs> so while it is true that it's the holy spirit that ultimately creates conviction the manifestation of the miraculous in our lives and in the church you know when i came down you need to see the multitudes of people outside there are people sitting on the soccer way here my brothers and my sisters listen you went to school do you think human beings are stupid do you think someone will transport himself from another nation or another state some of you have not eaten since you came you came straight to sit down is god so wicked to sit down and allow you carry your trouble and go back 
oh not koinonia i welcome you to a place where god has given us the keys to deal with everything that is not of god i saw so many people standing outside the overflow by the roadside and compassion just gripped my heart i said imagine if i were one of these people and they were happily standing they were not complaining they just knew that if i may but touch the hem of his garment my brothers and my sisters let me tell you forgive me if it sounds proud but god has given us something let me tell you sincerely we we make bold and we ask the world to come and receive because he has given us something i told you last week you only knock a door that you don't have the key when you have a key you don't you stop knocking you open that's the same way your destiny will be open the lord declared prophetically that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness so in a meeting like this if i were you my heart is stayed on that word listen let me tell you please listen you see me teaching passionately we are going to pray when i teach like this huh, i don't teach as a preacher i come with my heart full of a burden are you getting what i'm saying i come sincerely with my heart full of a burden because i love god but i love his people too my greatest satisfaction is not my personal progress is seeing the hand of god made manifest in your life when instructions are given when these spiritual things are given you must open your heart to believe them you see the the gospel works with the simplicity of childlike faith sometimes many of us carry this trado african pride and that's what stops us from receiving god wants to step in and touch you and you are wondering will god really touch me you know my peculiar problem you know the name are you the first to be in trouble god knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble let me tell you this i don't care what the situation is but i want us to agree that this god of heaven ah uh, the king of the universe that he will arise for you tonight you see let me tell you this my prayer this year when i was fasting and praying this year i prayed a prayer i said lord some people don't know what a testimony is give them one they only know how other people's testimonies the lord did this for this but they have never had a testimony themselves the day you have a real testimony yourself it will humble you you wouldn't know whether to stand or to kneel down that's what i'm praying for you for today a testimony testimony when the hand of god comes in a meeting and upon a man you see let me tell you this the supernatural is not just falling down and roll you can fall down and roll from left to right and stand up and go back and not testify the proof that god came is the testimony that follows the testimony the testimony of jesus the testimony of jesus apostle i came here barren march miracle service by april miracle service i'm one month pregnant that's a testimony listen come david down when the devil oppresses your life destroys everything about you he uses men as a canvas to write a letter to god that your dominion and your royalty is still being contested with oppression is a letter sent through men to god the highest of god's creation the devil writes upon your life i will destroy the family and i will make sure everyone begs like you send a um, a chat send and then a miracle is god's reply that god writes through you and says in spite of this i am still on the throne It's true. I believe in miracles. I honestly and truthfully believe in miracles. I believe in principles. 
I believe in mysteries, but I believe in divine intervention. My brothers and my sisters, God can shorten a man's journey. What then is the excellency of his mercy? Listen, God is a God of process. I agree. Listen carefully. God is a God of principles. I agree. He will not excuse laziness and he will not excuse spiritual laxity. But let me tell you, when blind Bartimaeus said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. The mercy of God can shorten the journey of a man. If you get born again at age 40, do you know how long it takes to know God? genuinely know God you don't read your Bible in two months and know God but there's something the Spirit of God can do and give you a solid encounter that in six months you have caught up with the spiritual level of more than five years how about restoration your parents started building from 1999 till today it has stopped at Lintel level right there you went to school and said i'm going to pay it and finish everything the day you said you pay it you almost died i made a vow with my life that i would believe this word and i will engage it life is too risky to be careless with spiritual laws engage it don't wait until the devil kills your life and your children before you know many believers learn too late let me say this and thank god for his mercy you will receive but do you know there are some of you the lord spoke to you about coming here since last year you've been arguing and giving reasons and excuses your situation would not have been that bad but thank God because although Lazarus was three days dead, Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. Not only the healer. When I prayed, I told the Lord, I said, please Lord, give people a testimony. Real testimonies. I was blind. Now I see. God did something in three weeks to my finances. Everybody see what God can do. God transformed my family. God turned me around and did something for me. I don't doubt your love for God, but there must be proofs of that love. There must be proofs of that love. Somebody shout, Lord, give me an evidence. Say, Lord, give me an evidence. I believe in proofs. John chapter 4 and verse 48. I'll begin to pray shortly. Bless you. 4 verse 48 he says and jesus said unto him who was speaking here jesus except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe how true how true that there are so many people in your family until they see what the power of god does in your life they will never believe your god they think god is one of those things this is a charm this is this this is that and then God is one of them. But the day, like Dagon, all those gods fall before the Almighty God and you return back with a solid evidence. Let me tell you that day, like Pharaoh, your loved ones will confess that this your God is God. Are we together? So I want you to be serious. Don't sit down and just look around and say, ah, who is going to receive? Let me clap for him. No, it's an insistence. It's a desperation. Except ye see miraculous signs, you shall not believe. Luke chapter 5. We'll read the first 11 verses. That miracles can help to create solid convictions. Charles and Francis Hunter, powerful evangelists, they've gone to be with the Lord now. They wrote a book that a miracle is worth a thousand words. I believe them. I believe them. The world is tired of our noise and our stories. They want to see a demonstration and a manifestation of the reality of the life and the power of God. It says, and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Next verse, please. 
and saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets uh-huh we're reading to 11 and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship next verse now when he had left speaking he said unto simon launch out into the deep and let your nets for a drought five what happened Simon answering said master we have toiled all night in other words he said lord look you are not the first to pray for me a man of god prayed for me in zaria another man prayed in wherever you know so god is one of those things you bless me oh yeah do it master we have toiled all night not for a few hours all night night vigil looking for a fish and did not catch even one it says nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net six and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their next seven and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships miracles can create relationships that you get a miracle and partners that were minding their business you can say come and join me who will not follow someone with results who will not let me tell you the bible talks about a wealthy man um, how did he put it now a poor man that we even with much entreaties they will run away from him there are many people that come from where we come from and will pass us as if they don't know us because you represent shame and anything that looks like Ichabod, the departure of the glory men will usually find a way to excuse it from ah, but the bible says you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah a delight and they came and filled both ships so that they began to sing verse 8 when simon peter saw this look at this this is what miracles do he fell down at jesus's knee saying depart from me i'm a sinful man was a sermon preached a serious miracle happened and that miracle created conviction the same way some of you have been laughing at men of god sincerely and laughing at everything that has to do with the power of god and by the time we'll be sharing the grace tonight you will stand and go back quietly not talking to anybody and say i've seen today i heard with my ears like job but i've seen with my eyes that god is real and his power is real his grace is real nine for he was this is what led to the repentance he was so men can be astonished to repentance that they look at your life and say promise when did this happen when did god lift you was it not last year together we were discussing and you tell him there is a name god is called though, the lifter of men the lifter of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters run away from anybody who tell you results don't matter they do they do out of the abundance of the evidence of the workings of God in your life the nations will bow to your God they will never bow to you just because you are talking man of God hear me no results you have MP pews there's there's no way around it there must be an evidence a serious evidence when John questioned the messiahship of jesus he didn't answer with a statement he said go and tell john what you have seen the blind see the deaf hear the dead are raised and the gospel is preached to the meek and then he says blessed is he that is not offended so the moment there are no miracles the messiahship of the christ is questioned john himself the one who ordained jesus said go and ask him is he the messiah miracles confirm that Jesus is the Messiah God is not a herbalist he's not a herbalist that is ahead of other herbalists no wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name there are people who have names politicians have names 
businessmen have names captains of industry gatekeepers of mountains have names but my brothers and my sisters there is a name it says there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved and it's in that name tonight that we will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness The miraculous manifests the glory of God and causes people to not only believe God but to trust God. John chapter 2 and verse 11. The first miracle of Jesus, what we call the miracle at the wedding of the Cana of Galilee, he turned water to wine. The Bible says, This beginning of miracles, this beginning of not this beginning of sermons not this beginning of discussions this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him believed on him we believe in the god that heals and saves and delivers that's why we kept the seats for you that's why we we knew you would come because the hand of God will bring you and we knew you would not be disappointed brothers and sisters there is a God in heaven God is not a herbalist don't let your pain demean him he is still the king of the universe the whole world lieth in wickedness Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good it takes the manifestation of the power of God to do good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him for God was with him for God was with him We're going to pray you have to convince yourself it's going to be a quick walk and we're going to cry to God and say Lord whatever I carried from my house whatever I carried from my place of work that I brought before you it should not return back with me it should be clear and evident that I met the Lord Jesus Christ it should be clear and evident right where you are sitting you will soon stand up but right where you are sitting i'd like you to talk to the lord please be serious and be desperate lord i have come to you i've come to you i've come to you i've come to you my life must be changed my finances must be changed my destiny must be changed lord i've come to you as a pastor i've come to you as a prophet as an apostle there has to be greater oil upon my life lord i hear you are a restorer restore me online please make sure you are praying those outside make sure you are praying there is a god that answers prayer when the lord turned again the captivity of zion it says we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for them it says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the negev turn again our captivity there is a god that can turn around the captivity of men Abarada Balakatos.
pray. Doesn't matter where you are seated, doesn't matter where you are connecting from. The power of God is able to save to the uttermost. Father, I'm praying that infirmity in my body must leave this night. That financial situation must die this night. That oppression that has kept my family down. Did the Bible not say this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith? A miracle walker, God is a glorious God, God is a miracle walker, God is a glorious shortly and I'll begin to minister by the Spirit your own assignment is to receive you have come let me tell you something there is enough grace to solve whatever challenge it is that has plagued you yours is to believe in the power of God it says if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A lady, the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside. Please carry her and bring her now. There is a lady I'm seeing. I just saw light from in here. Write the power of God upon that lady. Please bring her. Please bring her. And then bring the someone on this row. I'm seeing like, like a smoke just going round. And it's like it's locating someone. The power of God is going to come on someone. Please pick the person and bring the person out. You reign. You reign. Hello.
from outside i cross the hand of captivity over your life in the name of jesus christ i cross the hand of captivity over your family in the name of jesus i saw a lot of oppression over the life of this lady and in the name of jesus we silence the voice of wickedness we silence the voice of wickedness hold on please the lord is showing me something right now i saw this while i ministered in abel kuta i started seeing snakes on the ground snakes on the ground and that's what i'm seeing right now and this is this is the manifestation of a spirit and there are many families that are under this yoke whether you believe it or not just let me minister to you i'm declaring right now the power of god is going to start coming on people that represent those families bring them out you are not shouting anything you are not saying anything bring them out i'm speaking by the spirit the word of god has been declared there are families i'm seeing serpents snakes snakes inside and outside bring them even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered and the captives of the mighty by the fire of the holy spirit i judge those spirits wherever you are represented in anyone here represented in anyone here i speak by the hand of god you reign, you reign. Hello, bring them out i'm still on that case the power of god is still locating people i'm seeing snakes Jesus I'm still praying we are not doing too many things tonight we are going to the root of many people's challenges I'm saying it again there are still spirits and I speak by the anointing of the Spirit of God wherever they are overflow one two three across the road I'm declaring judgment judgment upon those spirits the fire of God is coming upon you right now whether you are standing for yourself or for your family bring them out there is no escape for when his voice comes they come out from their hiding place hallelujah now listen there are people i'm seeing something that looks like a knife being inserted in people and i'm seeing people beginning to run just run when you see people doing that hold them and bring them the lord is bringing deliverance that one is not speed this one is not the prayer for speed i'm just telling you as the lord is showing me right now i decree and declare i don't know those that the lord is cutting them free from every kind of diabolism but i stretch my hands by the spirit i command judgment on every force judgment on every power in the name of jesus christ the hand of god is coming upon them you will begin to see them run around just running is 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 not a, a making of their own it's by the power of the holy ghost bring them out
The Lord is giving me an instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave. In the name of Jesus Christ and at the count of three, any family, whether territorially or by whatever connection is tied to the spirit of the grave, I'm declaring at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, the power of God is setting you free. One, two, three. The spirit of the grave, the spirit of the grave. The spirit of the grave, I curse you by the God of heaven. The spirit of the grave, I curse you by the God of heaven. Just follow me this night. Now, I'm praying for all those in front. They came out because the Lord showed something. I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three, I speak to this spirit. Release everything you have taken from these families. One, two, go, go, go. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, out of their lives out of their destinies I command the release I command the release I command the release release breakthroughs release open doors hallelujah we are going to pray please just pay attention and let God help you. You came here tonight to receive. Listen to me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed. Someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you. Or it may happen once in a while. This is a strange oppression of darkness. And I declare, I'm praying right now. I'm seeing fire all over this place because there are many people. That is the root cause of many oppressions in your life. At the count of three, you will shout that name again. That is above every other name. And some of you will feel something leaving you immediately. I declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions, at the count of three, let there be emancipation. One, two, get ready. Three. I command those spirits, go now. Strangers of the night. Strangers of the night. Kebrakatakata. Rekatakata. Help that gentleman. Strangers of the night. Reketepe rekata. Embreketeteketekete. Bring them out. Strangers of the night. I curse you by the God of heaven. Molesting the saints. Planting sicknesses in their bodies. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Hello, Kim Madonna. There is a certain family here 
I'm seeing that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone. Something that has to do with a stone. I don't know what that means and in what tribe. But I'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone. I don't know if it's for protection or for whatever. But in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That any fraternity with the elements of Christ. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Help them please. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The mysteries behind the strange hardship of people. The mysteries behind the oppression of people. Oppression of families. Doors. Doors are opening. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Doors. Doors. Some of you will feel fire on your hands. Fire on your hands. Doors are opening. Two leaf gates. In the spirit. Fire on your hand. You will know by the fire that comes to your hand. I'm seeing fire coming on people's hands. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Doors opening. You must testify. Doors opening. Doors opening. Doors opening. Age long doors. Age long doors that have been closed for many years. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains being taken from your feet chains being removed in the name of jesus i decree and declare i saw an angel stand there chains being taken up from your feet in the name of jesus christ chains being taken from off your feet listen let me explain something to you this is not just some disorganized jamboree god is turning the destinies of men up. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy. Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now. There are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life. But there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals, individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, once I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. 
I stretch my hands now among the Emmanuels and the people delay 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 there is an anointing coming now is crushing that spirit just because I'm praying for Emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you in the name of Jesus delay delay God is visiting delay broken by the spirit of God please help them so they don't injure themselves he came to set the captives free to set the captives free hold on this young lady lift your hands this this yes you lift your hands i'm stretching my hands towards you i don't know what it is that i saw but i saw something like smoke the other one the smaller one with white yes i just saw something like smoke coming out of you and the lord is saying this is oppression for many years that has something to do with your abdominal region in the name of jesus christ I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let that oppression go let it leave you let it go let it leave you right now in the name of Jesus there is a woman now I'm going to pray for people generally but I don't know how we we'll do this there is a barren woman in overflow three barren woman trusting God for the fruit of the womb please if if you can allow the woman to run and come God is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child. Overflow three. Please let her run and come. I'm hearing a name Maureen 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 what is your name lift your hands where are you from shout Jesus loud as you can Jesus! let the power of witchcraft over your life be broken my dear look at me look at me shout Jesus. Jesus I crush that spirit right now in the name of Jesus and the man you see in your dream in the name of Jesus may you never see that man again please make sure you they don't why is mama here is she Maureen this woman I, I'll pray for you that woman come madam is that your daughter? Come, madam. Where are you coming from, ma? Let her come. Sir? Where are you coming from? I'm from area C. Area I'm C? No, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Mama, you are a sincere woman. But if I did not pray for you, huh? it's a bike that will kill you from the market in an accident. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck and they just say survive by that the woman is dead i'm not a prophet of doom mama please don't be afraid in the name of jesus christ hold my hands i extend your life by the power of the holy spirit that the plague of death see let me prophesy upon someone here anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year i'm praying by the spirit now I'm praying by the spirit and in the name of Jesus anyone that the spirit of death is haunting anyone being haunted by the spirit of death I command that it is crushed now in Jesus name what is your name my dear Maureen come you will look at a beautiful lady like this but in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a human being but no face no face like this i'm just seeing a blank face like this 
Let me tell you what this means. It's a yoke of bad luck. That people stand and cannot bless you. You have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded. The lady on yellow, lift your hands. There's the call of God upon your life. There is a prophetic grace that is upon you. And the Lord is saying you are stepping into it right now. I stretch my hands to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into that grace. I'm still praying for her. In the name of Jesus I declare. I'm seeing fire coming upon you right now. And that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. bad luck listen i'm going to hold her but a different person is the one that will receive before i pray for her this is just allow me do my my mad thing hold my hand in the name of jesus i'm not praying for her i'm praying for someone now by the spirit of the lord but the lord is saying i should hold her as i pray for the person lord in the name of jesus this yoke of bad luck i'm speaking now please help them this yoke of bad luck by the power of the Holy Spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you in the name of Jesus let it be broken now 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 be broken now. now let me pray for you be free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I take away this that I'm seeing and in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We're going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen. Are you married? You are married? Yes, sir. But you don't have a child? Yes, sir. From Overflow 3? Yes, sir. Where's your husband? not here it's not but well, you're married yes sir. come and stand here and watch the god of wonders i don't know you madam from overflow three you are from overflow three you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb why did you come your name is maureen what do you do madam hold on i'm a business woman you're a business woman where i used to sell at the young um random canoe but right now the business is scattered. do you know why i'm asking you no I must pray for you because this thing is not only you there is nobody doing well in your family your entire family this is what i'm saying is a spirit huh? except you open up something and miss even physical money used to get missing from you you will keep money and count it and found find out that it's not what you kept is that true if i'm lying just say i'm lying where are you from from a new Anambra state. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the state Anambra. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state. Anyone, usually when God shows me this, anybody who is from that state connected by blood, the power of God begins to come upon them to bring deliverance. It's a sign and a wonder. I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus. That anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you be free right now in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus please help them be free in the name of Jesus and number states be free in the name of Jesus I'm still seeing the map in my vision be free in the name of Jesus My friend, that young man holding his hands, shout Jesus from where you are. The yoke is broken. I cast it out of your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I need to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Look at me. You insulted a woman some years ago. And the woman told you it will not be well with you. It was like a joke. Truly the thing followed you. This is what God is showing me. Now, I'm not a prophet of doom. 
I'm going to pray for you. I don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it. You insulted the woman and she stood and told you that it would not be well because what you were saying about her was not what she did. Hold my hands. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, the scourging tongues of men, the scourging tongues of men, except you know where you stand, a cause causeless shall not stand. But if there is a cause, it will stand though. It will stand. Are we together now? I will pray. Where are your siblings, madam? Hi. This woman, no. Oh. You are not here alone. Where are the rest? Call them. Just stand where you call. What is their name? AGK. Quickly, please. And Victor. AGK, come. And, and who? Victor. That is and my Victor. Son. Yes. Victor is not your brother. Victor is a small my boy. Son, yes. Where is he? Let him come. Because I'm seeing the boy, you are saying Victor is a little boy. Ah, uh, are you married? Yes. You have a son? Yes. Your son's name too is Victor? Yes, he's the one I'm calling. Is the boy that you are talking yes. about? You said your brother. No, HK is my brother. Then Let the boy come. As young as that boy is too, if I don't pray for him, he will start stealing. Eh? There are two boys, small boys that will be delivered from this spirit. No matter where you keep anything, they must steal it. We are not condemning people. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. God is delivering people. To the pure, all things are pure. Nobody is calling any family a bad family. But this is a place where God is visiting people. Where is the person, please? Come, celebrate him as he comes. You're welcome, sir. I will pray for you. God is going to turn your family around. This is the little boy. My friend, how are you? Come. How old are you? 11 years old. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I will pray for you. How can a nice boy like this and the next thing start picking things? Do you know? Let me tell you. These small children that steal are not thieves. It's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment, it was not dealt with because most of what they steal they don't need it that's how you know it's a spirit are we together yes that's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy don't assume they will be spiritual by default my friend let me pray for you father thank you for this adorable young man and this guy has a great destiny you see this boy i'm looking at a star rising as i'm laying my hands on him this is what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus christ i pray for you you will be a great man by the power of the holy spirit hold this woman the anointing of the spirit is coming on her in the name of jesus christ sir what do you do a medical sales representative. You, you are a medical sales representative. Medical sales representative. Can I pray for you? You are a sincere person, eh? but this thing, they are just forces that want to destroy your family. I will pray for you. Eh? April, May, June. It will look like you held a charm. The way God will turn your life around. You believe it? In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Madam, Come, the power of God is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare this thing that I'm seeing tied to your waist, I lose it right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, be set free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are the one trusting God for a child? Come. How long have you been married? Three years. Three years. No child. You too? Are you married? Five years. Four Five years. Four months. No child. And doctor said after two surgeries, they said my husband cannot impregnate me. He did surgery twice. Don't cry. Jesus is here. Huh? You went through two surgeries. Where is your husband? He's at home. He's at home. Don't cry. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? Wasteland. You see, these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit. Imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through. Sometimes we take some things for granted. Imagine the advices. Someone now will recommend and say, go to a herbalist. Go and do this. And don't cry, my sister. Two surgeries you went through. Mm. 
my head. Now I'm seeing something being removed from your stomach. Look at what is happening to her. Yet she went through two surgeries. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free now. Madam, I set you free now. I'm praying for the rest, but I set you free now. Hold my hands. Come. In the name of Jesus, I declare supernatural miracle for you now. Release this woman now. As I'm praying for you, I'm praying for your husband wherever he is. According to the time of life, may you return with your miracle children. It's over. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. My dear, let me. Why is this woman here? You are married to Madam? No child? How long? Four years and um, five months. Four years, five months. Where are you coming from? Jigawa State. From Jigawa State. Please come. Oh dear. Do you know why God is dealing with these issues? Because he has declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. It's fruitfulness from any dimension any dimension look at this woman look at these women crying i may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in i think it's the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family that you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister please don't cry who brought you here you came alone sarah huh? sarah oh dear Put your hand on your stomach. Is she a Christian? She's, she's a Christian? Yes. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you are a Muslim or Christian. The Lord, everybody the Lord healed in the Old Testament. He healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb and I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness, let it be broken right now. Look at this, let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but I'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing, coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be gone now let it be gone forever let it be gone forever let it be gone forever my dear put your hand on your stomach what's your name blessing, blessing. where's your husband he's not here he's not here yes. father in the name of jesus i don't care what the medical report is we agree as a family of faith that these are dear sister carries her miracle child now i decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we are not praying at random we we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasarawa state nasarawa state are you alone no I'm you came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking
in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now I'm seeing a family of one, two, three, four, five, six graduates. Nobody's employed. Six graduates. You are all graduates. Nobody has a job. Who is that person? Six graduates. Please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out. Six graduates. No job. Not one person has a job. I want to pray for you. You're the one for the fruit of the womb? Huh? I have to pray for you I'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. Is your husband here? Is your husband here? Yes. Where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Don't something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here, he's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Think come out of you. Opportunity to hand their lives, opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough this is what i'm seeing i don't know what it is that i'm seeing but i'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing coughing something out in the name of jesus christ let it be gone now let it be gone forever let it be gone forever let it be gone forever my dear put your hand on your stomach what's your name blessing Bless where's your husband he's not here he's not here yes. father in the name of jesus I don't care what the medical report is we agree as a family of faith that these are dear sister carries her miracle child now I decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now I correct it by the power ah, I'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what I'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of Jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we are not praying at random we we'll pray madam I will pray for you where are you coming from Huh? Nasrawa State. Nasrawa State. Are you alone? No, I'm You came with who? Only me. Only you. Come. Just the woman. I will pray for her. We have to pray for the sick. But how many of you have seen what God is doing here? Listen, you see, if you love the Lord and you see God attacking. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire 
and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now I'm seeing a family of one, two, three, four, five, six graduates. Nobody's employed. Six graduates. You are all graduates. Nobody has a job. Who is that person? Six graduates. Please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out. Six graduates. No job. Not one person has a job. I want to pray for you. You're the one for the fruit of the womb? Huh? I have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed i'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby i will pray for you because if i don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the lord is showing me and i'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam kano kano is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he husband sir please come there's Daddy something the lord wants to do in your family don't worry he's, he's here he's coming thank you sir thank you for coming god bless you i want to pray for you you came from kano too you came from kano too sir i'm going to pray for you number one god is going to give you the fruit of the womb number two God is restoring your finances. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God is restoring your finances. Amen. This is a serious issue. As you are here coming now, the financial trouble you are into is only God that can bring you out. Amen. Is that true? God is going to help you. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, why are they here? Six graduates, no job. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, by your mercy and by your grace, let there be a sign and a wonder in the life of this woman. Just keep her down. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, everything that is wrong, be corrected now. In the name of Jesus, sir, please can you hold my hands? In the name of Jesus, I speak over your finances. There is a grace that can restore, and I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, let me talk to you, and then we'll pray for the sick. You are the, both of you, where are you coming from? You are here in Zaria? Yes. And you are, yes, I know your face. Six graduates, no job. Yes, sir. Including you? Yes, sir. Come. No. But there are six Nigeria people. Now. Yes. But there's no job for yes, them. Yes, sir. Can we agree that God will give them a job? Yes, sir. And you too? Yes. Let's pray. Come. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, there is an anointing that is coming upon you, eh? and is for the sake of your family in the name that is above all names i release this grace upon you and i pray let the embargo of joblessness be broken now even on both of you i use you as a point of contact to pray now something is leaving this lady's hand you something is leaving your hand i cost that yoke now in the name of jesus your hand is a symbol of your productivity and i declare in the name of jesus let there be liberty liberty for all of you liberty i open the doors of jobs in jesus name i pray why is he here you are a graduate six from where please from abuja abuja yes you are a school of ministry student madam let me talk to you where are you coming from natural state are you married Bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit. The hand of God is coming upon someone. The 
Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous. Please bring the person. Let's save time. Father, I establish this victory over this lady's life. The oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever. Broken now and broken forever. Ah, we don't have time. Our time is gone. But the Lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed i'm seeing this guy carry not you now i'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in kaduna state hello kim matona hello hello kim matona under this grace whose name has been taken for any diabolic activity I stand by the hand of God whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service. The way God is taking us. I want to pray. Shade and doctor, please come. The Lord wants to end an old issue in your family. Please come. This is what the Lord is showing me. This thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60, 70 years. The Lord is opening my eyes to see now. Please, I want to pray for you. Those under the anointing, help them. Please, I'm just using two of you as a point of contact. But I'm seeing a spirit. This is an ancient spirit. The way this thing works is that men rise. The moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing, they must die. This is the spirit I'm seeing. Please listen. I'm not... I'm just using them and I'm ministering the way God is showing me. These are not the only families with this thing, but the Lord is saying I should deal with it now. Provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle, you no death will touch you. But the moment you touch that bar, you are going down. And the Lord wants to destroy it because God is using both of you to start a new program in the family. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I, I, I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. Bring that little girl, as small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of our family. As small as you are seeing this, this little girl. Because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family. And as small as she is, the devil wants to kill her. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I use this, my dear daughter, as a point of contact. That everything that is not the planting of God, I scatter it now in the name of Jesus. May God use this, our precious daughter, and truly may she be the deliverer of our family. In the name of Jesus. A lady is going to start running because I'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family and that spirit is going to start driving her to run away so i'm telling you in advance you are going to see the person stand up to start running away it's, it's not even this lady i'm talking about this somebody in the crowd you will not even you will not be in control of yourself it's a spirit because i'm about to rebuke it right now father i thank you for the bonire family and by extension the various families the altar that sits upon this family even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives i break that yoke now i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood that ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family be broken I open up the door of increase. Rise to the zenith of your profession. I forbid the spirit of death once and for all. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, an issue that is age long. Let me tell you this. A mighty deliverance has happened to this family. This thing I'm telling you, fought their grandparents fought their parents and if not delivered now will still fight them if there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family you rise to a position and crash down in the name of Jesus at the count of three let fire land upon such individuals and scatter that altar scatter that altar forever in the name of Jesus Christ it took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble now I declare to you, a new order starts in your lineage. A new order starts in your family. Where children live long and they become successful. And that every embargo of witchcraft, once and for all, is broken in the name of Jesus. Madam, I can pray for you now. Where did you say you are from? Just, just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa State. Yes, Where are you from? Ebony State. Ebony State. Ebony State. I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you. Yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where's your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up, stand up. Please stand up, stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus, yes, sir. You are from campus, yes, here. sir. What do you do? I am lecturer in the university. You are a lecturer? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man. You, but there, you are intelligent. I don't know you, Thank but you, you are a brilliant man. It Thank even you, took grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, it's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, you were too exceptional. Yes, and you are supposed to be abroad now. Yes, I don't know what has kept yes, you down. Sir. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be yes, here. Yes, but sir. somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about? That you carry a man's destiny see let me say it i'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of jesus whatever belongs to you 
and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men it must be released this night it must be released this night sir please stand up what's your department political science, sir. Political science. can i pray for you yes sir you will know that there is a god in heaven amen what do you do my dear I'm not doing anything. you are not doing anything no sir ah, i have to pray for you yes, sir. Ah, that trip abroad you must go Amen. Amen. because there is an honor and there is a professor that god has destined that you will meet Amen. and i'm going to pray do you believe what i'm saying yes sir in the name of jesus christ sir i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit i release you and i release your destiny Amen both for you and your wife i decree and declare scale new heights in your profession in the name of jesus christ number two there is a friend in your life and the lord is telling me to tell you to be careful there is a friend in your life be careful i won't say more than that be careful what god has joined let no man put asunder I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Focus. Huh? Focus. From Joss. Not state of origin where you came from that you left it and came huh i want to pray for you what do you do i, I i'm a secretary you are what i'm a secretary you are a secretary yes, sir. come let me pray for you I... one of these days we'll just trust god and do a night vigil honestly so that we can deal with this issue seriously you may think that time is being wasted until you see what God is turning around in your life. All these people came from Joss. Madam, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will not have what they call that pregnancy. That they have to do, um, no, bridge is bridge or something like that. This is what I'm saying. I'm not pregnant. All done. Let me pray for you. Come. You are sick. It looks like pregnancy like his breach this is what i'm saying the pregnancy that looks like is that will open you up and carry something out where are you coming from Josh? what did they say is wrong with you um, multiple fibrosis no a man don't feel embarrassed can i talk to you a man used to come in a dream huh yes, and sleep with you yes, sir. is that true yes, sir. that's what brought this pregnancy I'm a man of God. Don't be af afraid. You, you heard the story I told you now. Yes, sir. Madam, if I'm lying, look at me before the whole world and say I'm a liar. That you go to bed and a man comes and all of a sudden this started coming. Of course, medically, you would think that, okay, you check it. There is nothing there. Yet the pregnancy will not go. How long has this thing been? Three years. Three years. Don't cry. Don't cry. Who did you come with? May this place remain a place of solutions. Was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically? And had strange go and listen to my teaching the mystery of the serpent and the woman my sister can I pray for you you believe in Jesus look at this adorable lady look at imagine a woman carrying this for three years is that pregnancy it does a human being stay three years in the stomach are you married of course imagine what this this means to her marital life put your hand there 
father in the name of jesus christ look at this look at what is happening to the woman in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by god let it be uprooted in this body is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father it must be uprooted i uproot this right now in the name of jesus christ i uproot this right now in the name of jesus by a strange mystery may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body in the name of jesus christ just keep her down there madam let me pray for you what do you want the lord to do for you i'm believing him for a life partner life partner do you believe god can give you a life partner yes, sir. do you love jesus? love jesus you are born again father the bible says male and female he created them she's not embarrassed she's standing sincerely and telling you that i came so that god will bless me with a life partner i lay my hands upon you and i decree and declare may god bring a responsible man to your life Amen. you will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow Amen. in the name of jesus christ i declare it so and for all these people standing i pray for them may the lord himself bring miracles over their life in jesus name i pray i may not have time to minister to all of you one by one please forgive me huh coincidentally i'm going to just tomorrow i'll be in just saturday sunday i'm ministering in a conference i'm excited i'll be in house on the rock at rayfield saturday and sunday i mean just but let me pray for you all of you who came all the way my dear look at me you love jesus yes sir with all your heart yes sir i drive the boy that the devil wants to bring to your life say amen amen you you may not understand what i'm saying but let me repeat myself i drive i didn't say god drove him in the name of jesus christ as one who loves you well eh? i drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life amen in the name of jesus amen. i'm not looking down it is god's will that all men be saved but then i'm telling you that in the name of jesus christ everything that would destroy your destiny let it be far from you amen. by the power of the holy spirit amen. praise the lord for all of you i may not know why you came but let me pray for you in the name of jesus return with your testimonies in the name of jesus return with your testimonies in the name just believe what i'm praying for you in the name of jesus return with your testimonies god bless you please go back to your seat my god can we still pray for the sick how many of you are trusting god for healing let me see your hands out there okay this is what is going to happen it's okay i'm, I'm going to pray for you 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 came you brought them okay i'm going to pray for you now you just relax now please because of time those under the anointing just leave them if there's no usher hold on a lady usher place your hand on that girl any lady usher release her now out in the name of jesus let it come to an end now and forever release her destiny release her family in the name of jesus christ let there be restoration let there be testimonies please this is how we are going to do it because our time is already gone we are going to do three things at the same time please listen number one you are going to be submitting your prayer requests number two those who are trusting god for healing in the various overflows please aside from those that i prayed for for barrenness if your reason of coming here is barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i want you to come to overflow one i want to pray for you myself aside from that please you are trusting god for a healing miracle 
I want you to move to your various overflows. So those are overflow one, move to the front of your projector stand. Overflow two, the same thing. Overflow three, the same thing. Those by the roadside, the roadside down to second equa. Join overflow two. You can join overflow two, please. Usher's protocol PR department, coordinate yourself to help them, please. So that the people know what they are doing. Praise the Lord. Those in here, you can come. You can come. The Lord bless you. Now, there are going to be men and women of God scattered across these various places who are ministering under a corporate anointing. Make sure you are standing for healing, please. Make sure you are standing for healing. No, no, no. Those for fruit of the womb, come in, please. The main auditorium. I want to lay hands on you by myself it doesn't matter what overflow you are if it is fruit of the womb please come the main auditorium i want to pray for you now please listen just a touch is enough you don't have to start explaining and telling the men of god this is a problem sometimes god can give them words if they don't don't worry just a touch and you will go back i want you to believe this that's why you came are we together while that is happening if you have your prayer request here you can just wave it and pass it. Let there be an usher. Okay, um, peace is here. You can pass it. Let there be an usher or somebody. Please, um, the various departments, coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this. Let's make it fast. Those online, um, you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests. And we're going to pray on it right now. Please, quickly, quickly. A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. A Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. Um, Pastor Alpha and Benga will go to overflow three. Overflow three. Pastor Femi and Kenny and ima go to overflow two also extend to those by the roadside extend to those by the roadside did you get let me pray for you pastor lawrence come i will pray for you and then you will join those at overflow three in the name of jesus christ grace for you by the power of the holy spirit let the anointing, let the grace of the Spirit come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, worship team, you give us songs of the Spirit while we are ministering. And as soon as hands are laid on you, you can go back rejoicing. Those who are seated, don't be careless, be praying in the Spirit. Because God is solving people's problems while you gather the prayer requests. If you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and there will be someone to reach you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will fall under the anointing here. Once that happens, the power of God will start moving to heal. Right here, those in front here okay so i can start praying now in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus christ be healed praise the lord please everyone stand say after me in the name of jesus whether you are inside or outside say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now lift up your voice and begin to pray please begin to pray
name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here, that by the grace of God, this will be the last time you have to visit this issue. Please pray. Please pray. Our time is gone, but let's make use of the time. stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God every request that I've written here by the God of heaven let this be the last time shatakato sebregete kotosh impratakato pregeteka may the Lord arise and solve impossible situations arise in the name of Jesus are you praying father that these Egyptians that I see today I see them no more forever the requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms we declare intervention we declare breakthrough we declare increase hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ we declare and we agree as a family of faith that this request will turn into testimonies in your life we declare that this request turn into supernatural testimonies the same way I am standing upon them, I decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that they are still praying for a few people, but let me just pray the final prophetic blessing on you because our time is gone. He says the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night I decree and declare every economic hardship that is bringing the saints to their knees and causing them to compromise I declare that you are exempted from it now Every prayerlessness represented in this place that the grace to pray seems to have gone down in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you I severe you from them right now in Jesus name I speak favor over your life and I declare in the name of Jesus walk in favor walk in favor walk in favor walk in favor walk in favor, walk in favor. therefore God has exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name it says that at the mention of that name every knee must bow i declare whatever must bow in your life from tonight let it bow right now let me pray for you finally and especially for those of us who are not within this city if you traveled far and came i'm praying for you now in the name that is above all names to all our visitors and all those who connect with us from far that includes those from our social media platforms i decree and declare whatever the issue of concern is that brought you here 
Return with the answers now. Return with the answers now. You will not need to tell people you came here. There will be the radiance and the glory of the spirit upon your life. I declare that every door that has refused to open, even as the Lord kept revealing here, I enforce it and we call that door open now. The new month is the fourth month of the year. The number four stands for balance. That means that whatever is left that must be shown in your life, you are blessed here but not yet blessed here. You are blessed here but not yet blessed here. I declare completion for you now. May April bring you completion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.